welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, welcome. So I have Dami and Cash here. What do you think about this kitty? Let's put this kitty on your back. See how... Oh! <laughs> so you see on the title today, I'm going to be discussing in detail how much it really cost to own a horse. Like I said, we are going to be going into detail, but please, if I do forget something that you have a question about, make sure you put it in the comments and I will answer it. And you guys, right now I'm going to be announcing the giveaway details for a Steph's Farm Fam t-shirt. All you have to do is go to the link that I have right here on the screen and it will be in the description down below. All you do is go there, you enter your email and I believe your phone number this is a giveaway right through my manufacturer so all you have to do is that it's super simple and of course if you want make sure you subscribe to my channel but that's all you have to do the giveaway ends Sunday so if you guys are watching this the first or second day you will have a chance to be entered into that giveaway if you aren't then you will just have to wait for the next one but if you guys want to know how much it really costs to own a horse then let's keep on watching so these are all the horses in my pasture there's a couple over there too so this is the first thing that I want to talk about is actually buying the horse. Okay, so like I said, before getting into all of the other aspects of owning a horse, we have to first buy the horse. So I'm gonna classify buying a horse into two different sections, and that's gonna be a great horse or a registered horse. So I used this term in one of my previous videos, and I was asked what registered means. So registered in simple terms just mean that you have a proven bloodline pedigree, and your horse is registered, and you can trace their pedigree back. And then grade, we're gonna use it as a horse term that it could be purebred technically, but there's no registered form of it. So the simplest term to call a non-registered horse that we may not exactly know what their breed is or if they're just not registered is gonna be called grade. So that's what we're gonna say. You can either buy a grade horse or you can buy a registered horse is just what I'm gonna go with. So that would be a typical quarter horse that maybe just isn't registered. I can call grade, doesn't matter. But with buying either type of horse, it doesn't necessarily matter in my opinion. This does matter to some people if they are looking for certain types of
training on a horse, certain bloodlines, if they're looking for reining background, barrel blood, anything like that, then that's where you're going to get a registered horse that has proven pedigree. Or you can just have your grade horse, your typical quarter horse, or any other breed of horse that just isn't registered. And typically those horses have a lower price tag. So registered horses, proven pedigree, they will have more of a higher price tag. In my personal opinion, I don't believe that any of the two is greater than the other. Um, I guess in special case scenario, if you were looking for a barrel horse, you might probably want to go to a registered horse that has proven barrel blood. Although, for instance, Spirit is, I don't believe, a registered horse. I do believe he's a cross between an Arabian and a quarter horse and he is a really good barrel horse so I'm not sure if they're sure of his actual bloodlines but for instance this horse may not have exactly barrel bloodlines but he's a barrel horse. So now on the other hand though like I said I don't like to prove if a horse is better than another horse whether they're registered or not because one of my least expensive horses on our property was Blaze and he's actually the most bomb proof horse out of any of the horses on my property and like I said he was the most affordable um, out of all the horses on the property. I just recommend you doing your research on what specific qualities you want out of a horse. When referring to a grade horse you could probably find a grade horse for around $600 to anywhere into the thousands. It really just depends what you're looking for and the level of training the horse has. Now if you're looking for a registered horse those I would typically say will start at a thousand dollars and then move on. You can even purchase horses that are upward of fifteen thousand dollars. Again just depending on their pedigree, what you're looking for, and how much training the horse has. So once you've done that, then you need a place for your horse to stay. So I'm gonna refer to this as boarding. So unless you have your own property, you'll need to board your horse, whether that's at a friend. like some of the horses on my property or it's at a boarding facility whichever route you choose I have boarded horses twice and I'm gonna go ahead and give you the prices that are for my area now I want everyone to realize this is prices for my area and I say that because this can vary wherever whether you're in the United States whether you're in another country I do believe in the United Kingdom prices are way higher than here in America so just keep that in mind so first case scenario I boarded at a stable so there was a barn where trigger had a stall and this stall at the time was only $250 and I say only because in fact it was a good deal because it was a stall and it was a partial board. So when you
When you board, there's either full board, partial board, self board, and I may be missing another one. I don't know. I didn't do this for many years of my life. But in my area, partial board, they will feed your horse for you and turn them in and out of their stall. Full, they will usually provide the feed as well, the shavings, all inclusive. You basically, technically, if you didn't want to, have to come out, they would be taking care of your horse for you. Now, that's on the high end of the price scale. Partial board is on the middle, and then there's also self-care, where you basically are just renting the spot for your horse to stay. You're coming and you're feeding twice a day, or whichever your feeding program is. You're letting your horse in and out of the stall. You're mucking your stall. You're providing your shavings. You're providing your feed. You're providing your hay. So pretty much, you're just renting the one space wherever you're at. So those are the three classifications that I'm going to go with in my area that are most prominent. For boarding so at the time it was $250 but like I said that's on the affordable side because typically for something like that I would say ranges around $500 so then on the other case is also pasture board which I've done as well and in my area it was only $140 so this is also per month just so you know so basically there was no stall there was a feeding stall though so the horse would come in and eat and as soon as the horse was done eating it would be turned back out to pasture so that's almost 24 7 pasture so that's what pasture board is. So like I said, those prices do range just because of what you're looking for. If you're going to a really high-end barn that has automatic waters or really fancy stalls and such like that, you have to take that into account for how much it's gonna be. So that kind of is a little bit loose because every place is going to be different.
depending on their amenities and depending on the location. So that one can be loose. If you are looking to buy a horse, you are going to need to just call around, figure out what you're looking for, figuring how much you can afford, and figuring out how much time that you can take to go tend for your horse. Like I brought up, if you do rent a stall, you're going to need buckets, you're going to need shavings, you're going to need a muck pick, things like that. So. Let's jump over to Tractor Supply. If you don't know what Tractor Supply is, in my area, it's a local... farm and agricultural store that we can get a lot of our horse care needs so we're gonna jump over there so I can get you some more accurate prices all right so we're gonna start first at the bucket section and as you can see they are $5.99 for these buckets and if you want to get bigger buckets they are $11.99 and then if you need to get
to get a mucking fork to muck the stall. They range around $19.99. Or if you're gonna get a metal one, this one was $29.99. And then if you wanna get a deep bucket one, this one's more expensive at $36.99. This is my favorite. So you have your shavings in there, $5.99 for these fine shavings. Um, if you want to use pellets, they're also $5.99. Um, a lot of like local feed stores though, you can get um, these for bulk and be a little bit cheaper. But just attract the it's $5.99. If you want to put your head... in a hay net or a hay bag they are around $17.99 so this is a hay bag and then this is a slow feed hay net and these are $9.99 and then this one is $6.99. All right, so we are in our feed shed. We have the horse, we have a place for the horse to stay, and now we need to talk about what the horse is gonna eat. So I'm gonna talk about different grains and just price base because grain is going to be dependent on
on what your horse needs. So I'm also going to talk about and classify it into two different types of horses, easy keepers and hard keepers. Just Just because that is a good fact to remember that if you have a hard keeping horse you may need to actually add food if you have an easy keeper horse you may not need to feed as much so those two things are really super important to remember because that can adjust how you are feeding your horse and how much you're actually spending on feed so i'm going to give you the basics of feed and their different prices but that can all depend on what your horse needs so take this with a little bit of a grain of salt just because this isn't going to be perfect for your horse and it doesn't really explain the whole gratitude of what your horse will need and how much is actually going to cost but I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about a couple things that we do in our feeding routine so we actually feed two different types of A grain. We feed Blaze a certain type of grain and then we feed the other three of our horses a different grain as well. And then also the other horses that are on my property, they also feed a different type of grain. As well. All of them do different things and they each work for each horse. So I'm just going to show you, just for example, the different feeds and kind of how much each of my horse needs. So this one, like I said, take with a grain of salt because everything's different. For instance, I'm gonna show you first off, this right here is Blaze's feed and this is about how much we feed him. So we feed him a do more maintenance feed. Now this is on the lower end of pricing for feed in my opinion. So let's jump back to Tractor Supply so I can show you how much this feed actually is. All right, so these are some prices at Tractor Supply. So this is the brand that we feed Blaze and his is $15.49. Now if we go over to the senior feed, same brand. $18.29. So that's how much these are. So now that I know the price, one bag will last around two to two and a half weeks because he gets a half a scoop of a more affordable feed because he's an easy keeper so this is why it can be different case by case by horse now let's look on the other hand this is trigger Louie and Cash's feed now this scoop right here is for trigger this is a seminal wellness feed and this is in the higher end of feed this one actually isn't a tractor supply but this feed is around 25 to 27 dollars depending on which feed store i go to so now this full scoop is for trigger and he gets this twice a day now i'll show you for louis so louis gets about this maybe just a little bit more and then cash gets about this much and now the next part of the feeding routine that's most important in my opinion and many other horse owners opinion is forage horses need a lot of 
grass and hay, actually at least 1.5% of their body weight in a day. So it really ranges around 1.5 to 2.5%, but they need at least 1.5% hay because you have to think they're gonna be foraging if your horses are on pasture like mine are so if you have a horse that weighs around a thousand pounds that's 2.7 tons of hay annually so if we think about for my four horses that's almost 22,000 pounds of hay a year just for four horses so in my area there is three most popular types of hay there's alfalfa orchard or timothy our most popular blend is tna which is timothy and alfalfa particularly i like to feed ona which is orchard and alfalfa
It's more of a grassy hay, it kind of helps their gut. And then there is pure alfalfa, which helps to keep a lot of weight on a horse, bulk them up. Alfalfa is good for your hard keepers. Trigger and Louie can't usually be on alfalfa. It kind of makes them a little hot, so it's a lot of sugar in it, more protein, makes them a little bit more energized. So typically they don't do well on it, but each hay. ranges differently so in my area alfalfa is our highest priced hay and then TNA would be our cheapest priced hay ONA is about in the middle and then I just wanted to show you this this isn't where I get my hay but if you did want to get a small um, compressed bale of alfalfa this is actually a $19.99 um, bales in my area start around $16 of ONA and then go all the way up to $30 for um, a bale of alfalfa are right, you guys so we have the horse we have a place for it to stay We're feeding it and now we need to know a really important part and that is horse maintenance now This is just gonna be general maintenance There will probably be a lot of other special cases with your horse's needs But this is what I'm gonna talk about is general maintenance for a horse. That's pretty unavoidable. So hoof trimming horses need their feet trimmed every four to six weeks so horses feet grow kind of just like hair let's say um, so they need to get a pedicure and they need their feet trimmed down and then on the other hand there's horses that need Shoot. So that's what you would see a typical horseshoe. Those are specifically made for your horse's feet and your specific needs. So if your horse doesn't need shoes, that in my area, just for horse trimming, ranges around $30 to $40 depending on your farrier. And a farrier is someone
who trims horses feet so in my area it's around 30 to 40 dollars every four to six weeks now if your horse does need shoes typically in my area for the fronts it's $90 and then for a full set it's about $240 and those will also need to be taken off chain and then the horse's feet will have to be clipped, re-put on, and I'm not exactly 100% on the exact dates of when your horse needs reshoot. None of my horses have shoes. Now I loop that into a dewormer because I deworm my horses at the same time that I get their feet trimmed. So dewormer can be really inexpensive as far as $2 all the way up to a more high-end dewormer at $14. In my personal opinion, I think...
I think they all kind of do the same thing because they all have the same active ingredient, which is usually ivermectin. So this is just a paste and it's exactly what it says it does. It deworms your horse, not saying that your horse has. worms but it is a preventative to make sure that they don't have worms so this is really important and I do this at the same time that their hooves are getting trimmed just to keep me on schedule so you just have to think that that's another expense that you have to do every four to six weeks with your horse next one is dental care horse dental care is very important but you really only need to tend to it generally once a year so once a year your horse will get its teeth floated so what that means is they're gonna go and they're gonna look around get any sharp points any grooves just to make eating a better experience for your horse and even riding sometimes if your horse's mouth is in pain it's not gonna be a good experience so a lot of the times you'll know that your horse is ready to have its teeth floated if they are starting to drop a lot of food when they are eating so it's important that if that's starting to happen make sure you call up your vet or whoever floats your horse's teeth to get them out to get your horse's teeth floated now this can be pretty expensive yes it is only annually but it's pretty expensive so there is two different ways that this can be done we have actually had both of these ways done so one way is without power tools so there's no anesthesia technically needed because there's no power tools no loud noise is really going into their mouth so they're just using hand tools they're grinding at the teeth getting all those grooves and sharp points out and that method is about $65 per horse in my area. Now on the higher end is when your horse gets its teeth floated with power tools. So they are actually going to need to tranquilize the horse with some anesthesia. And that's kind of where the price goes up because that anesthesia is really expensive. This will usually range around $200 in my area and uh, depending on how much anesthesia your horses need. The first time I ever got Trigger's teeth floated by my vet, um, she was a girl and didn't want to deal with his crazy antics at that moment and it cost me over $300 to get his teeth floated because of how much anesthesia they had to use. All right, so the next form
form of horse maintenance I want to talk about are going to be Coggins. This is an annual test to test again. against EIA and what that is is equine infectious anema so this is a test that technically has no cure or treatment for that all horses every year are supposed to be tested for in my area you have to have a Coggins almost everywhere it's almost like a car registration per se if you're out trailing your horse and you get stopped by an ag deputy or something like that they're gonna ask for your Coggins so this test ranges anywhere from 40 to $60 depending on your vet. In my area, it's $40. It's once a year. Okay, so the next one we're going to talk about are annual vaccines. So vaccines that I'm referring to are either rabies, tetanus, trigger, what are you doing? And other vaccines like that, they can range anywhere from 100 to 130 annually. Like I said, we usually do these around the same time that we do our Coggins. Now, those are technically the things that you You need to keep up maintenance wise as far as the vet but we can't forget that horses are huge clumsy thousand pound animals and when you put clumsiness with a thousand pound animal it can be a really expensive vet bill so I don't want anyone to think that just maintenance is just going to the vet annually to get just the shots and the Coggins drawn so one of the biggest price tags in horses is unexpected emergency equine vet so I actually have
three bills right here from unexpected equine emergency vet appointments that we have had with cash. So I'm going to pop up a picture right now. If you don't like graphic images, cover your eyes for like 10 seconds because this is when cash cut his head open. So this was an emergency vet appointment. because it was a really deep wound and we had to get it stitched up. So for instance, just the laceration and wound repair was $125. And then we can't forget the local anesthesia, which was $25. And also just the prep of getting the wound ready was an additional $25. And then of course they needed some medication that was $19 and then some more medication that was $14.50, probably to fight off bacteria and infection. And then another tranquilization fee of $20. And then of course, pain medicine, which was $46. And then we had to do another injection of more Trank for $10. And then at that time, we did follow up with a tetanus shot, which was $60. So like I said,
said I'm gonna be really detailed. This was a $344 unexpected vet visit, but let's look at another case. So again, this was Cash when he got some hay lodged into his eye and it made his whole eye swell up and eye injuries on horses are super super important and severe because it can make them blind really quickly if not treated so the emergency fee on this one was fifty dollars and we still had to bring them to the vet and then the exam was seventy five dollars so some bandamine paste which is like a pain reliever was forty four dollars and then the ointment just for his eye was thirty dollars so all I basically did is go to the vet he looked at the eye and put some ointment in there and that cost us hundred and ninety nine dollars and then last one I want to talk about is when cash got kicked so all of these were all unavoidable and just worse things that happen and the exam was forty dollars so we had one x-ray that was a hundred dollars an additional view of an x-ray was fifty dollars and then some anti-inflammatory
pain reliever, which is $24, bringing this vet bill into $214. And really quickly, I want to give you some timestamps so you can put this into retrospect. This was for one horse, and these dates were February 7, 2019, July 25th, 2019, and September 25th, 2019. So that was all within five to six months of each other of three. equine emergency unexpected vet visits. All right, you guys, so we found the perfect horse. We know the perfect place where we wanna keep it. We know how to feed it, and we know the general maintenance of the horse. Now kind of comes to the fun part, and that's gonna be all about riding. And not every horse has to be used for this, so just keep this in mind if you want a companion horse. You don't technically need the rest of these supplies. If you're looking for a quote unquote a pasture pet, you don't need the following. So I want to put that out there because if you can afford everything beforehand, you can afford having a horse. Now if you don't plan to ride the horse, then you don't need to think about the next expenses. <laughs> One of the big things before I go into talk about tack are lessons. So lessons for you and lessons for your horse. Course. So if you take a lesson in my area, typically for a lesson it starts around $60, so depending on how many lessons you want to take a week just think sixty dollars onward depending which discipline as well I still get lessons and this is a Western discipline lesson and it starts at sixty dollars in my opinion I do believe that English lessons are more expensive or if you're trying to do a certain specialty those lessons will be more expensive if you're just looking for regular just day-to-day -day training you could probably find around sixty dollars at least in my area I'm not sure what it ranges in other areas now moving on to horse training so there is different programs that you can send your horse to there's a lot of colt starting packages so that would be when they are super young and they're just getting broke there's 30-day packages 60-day packages 90-day
day packages or if your horse needs a tune up and it's way older it's already broke then you go on from there but I'm just gonna put a number out there just to put a number on it I would say don't think you're gonna spend less than a thousand dollars if you're sending your horse off for training and then of course the expenses of feed and hay while they're there okay so now that we've got the lessons under our belt because that is a really important aspect to think about I want to move on and talk about tax so this is a really fun part for me and it's probably a fun part for you if you ride horses so let's get into that so we're first going to talk about saddles I have three different saddles here at three different price points so the first saddle I'm going to talk about is this saddle that I purchased kind of when I started getting into riding and this is just a leather saddle it's really good for trail riding and it has worked really great um, it's a round skirt saddle but it's a lot saddle it worked really great it's really dusty from our move but I purchased this as a used saddle for only a hundred dollars so if you aren't super particular about your tack you can be inexpensive with with your tack. Now we're going to go over here to my right and we're going to look at the saddle that I currently ride in. This is my Corriente. I purchased this new. Corrientes are in fact an affordable, really nice quality saddle with a really nice quality tree. And this saddle cost me around $600. They can go up higher, but again, I still think for a saddle this is decently priced it does almost about the same thing as this really affordable saddle does um, this one though will probably last me a lot longer because it
is brand new and it is a little bit more comfortable and it fits my horse a little bit better that's just what I got because I was able to make this saddle where as a used saddle you may not get the perfect fit for your horse but that isn't always the case scenario you might find something used that really fits your horse I always look at used tax so don't be afraid that when you think about getting a horse needing to get tack it's going to be super expensive because it can be inexpensive now i'm going to show you how expensive it can be so this is a triple creek saddle i believe the saddle is around 1400 dollars. this is really nicely made um it does hold the name triple creek so you are paying for a higher price brand name it's a really beautiful saddle though it has a lot of tooling in it a lot of design and this is particularly a barrel saddle. So this one's more on the high priced end. Um, is it a saddle you could try ride in? Yes, you can do many things with this saddle. Um, will it do the same thing as other saddles? Yes, but if you're particularly looking for barrel racing, this saddle might be a little bit better for your barrel racing needs. It's totally up to you and personal preference. If you wanna spend this much money, this much money, it doesn't matter. It's what you're looking for. Um, some different specialties in riding do require a higher price tag, but again, if you're just looking for trail riding and trail riding tack, you can certainly get something that's used and really affordable. Even synthetic saddles are really affordable. So don't be afraid to look into that if you're just trying to trail ride. Again, like I said, if you're not even trying to ride the horse, you don't even need this stuff. Next would be your headgear. And I'm just going to call that that because um, in different disciplines, we call this a bridle or we call it a headstall or whatever you want to call it. So this is what this is. And then some people have bits. Some people use hacks, which is bitless. It just goes around their face. Whichever it is, you still have to remember that this is also an expense. Um, again, like I said, you can get these used. And then you'll need reins, which I randomly have this one rein here <laughs> for some reason. Um, but you'll need reins, so you need to include that into the price as well and then also you will need a saddle pad so I'm just gonna mention just those really quickly because technically that's what you need to be able to get on a horse and ride it for just like a trail ride let's say um, but I want to pop over again to tractor supply to show you some prices on some of these things so for example These are just some saddle pads that are in tractor supply. And they are ranging around forty dollars. Um, This can definitely go higher in price depending on the brand that you get. These are just charge supply ones. And then you have your bits. These range around $20 to $30.
unless you want something that's a different brand or more high end. And then reins, reins can be pretty expensive depending on what you wanna get. These um, leather reins are about 40 bucks right here, but you don't need leather reins. Um, these like yacht rope reins um, are softer and these are $27.99. So whichever ones you find, but then a girth, um, these can be kind of expensive. These here are just 30 bucks. Um, they can be more expensive depending on what you get. But I do advise invest your money in a good girth. They are really important to keep the saddle on. So when you have a horse, you will actually need a halter and a lead rope. There's actually two different types of halters. So you have these kind or you have a rope halter. If you watch my videos, you know that we use. Rope halters. I just really like the rope halters because of the nose band knots that just apply to those pressure points. These range around $20. They can be more or less, depending on the brand. Then you have your breakaways, and these break away if they hit on something just like. The name says, and these are around $26. And then you have your premium halters. Um, which range around $21. And then we get into specialty tax. So these are things like boots, like this, for instance. They can be completely... Completely different on different... price spectrums as well so just shop around if you want to get more specialty tack it can be more affordable or more expensive or also even a breast collar so for instance here's a breast collar here you You can get these new or used. They also do range on price scale. All right, you guys, last but not least, grooming tools. I believe that grooming tools are an essential when it comes to having horses. Some don't, but I do. So I'm going to touch on that because they are an expense and you do have to purchase them um, and they are really important. So this is my grooming tote. I've got lots of cool fun. And stuff in here like my favorite curry brush but we're gonna jump back over to tractor supply really quick because I want to give you some pricing on all these all right you guys so my favorite section the grooming section and we have all these
different options, but I'm gonna just talk about the basics of what I think you would really need. So just this curry, this is my favorite curry. You can get any tip that you want. I just like this one the best. Um, it's really affordable. This one's only $3.49. is a must so you need to get one of those and then next you're going to get your soft bristle brush um there's tons of different brands of these i always like to get the knockoff brands because they're cheaper this one's only 7.99 then you go over to your hard bristle brush this one's actually a mix between hard and soft and this one's 7.99 then you go down this one's one of my favorites it's hard bristle and it gets a lot of that loose dirt off same price then we have our little small face brush since four dollars and 99 cents it's just specific for the face it's just very soft then you're going to need your main and tail brush so realistically you can get any brand of these they're fairly inexpensive but they're is other brands that can be pretty expensive even if you have a brush at home that you just want to use that's perfectly fine as well this one's two dollars and 49 cents then you really need a hoof pick as you can see they range anywhere from 99 cents to a dollar 69 but my charge supply It was like out but you definitely need one of those they're really affordable so one of Of a major um, parts of grooming your horse and maintenance is fly spray. So you have all these options. Um, I believe this is like the cheapest one that you can get, $7.99. Um, okay, actually this one's $6.99. Um, in my opinion, I do believe most fly sprays are all comparable. Um, unless I actually do think this one works well because this one um, is weather. Proof up to 17 days. So I think that this one does have a little bit, in my opinion, um, advantage than something like a Bronco one. We mostly use Bronco though, but if it is rainy season, we will use the Ultra Shield. But as I said, there's like tons of different options of fly sprays. And then We 
actually make our fly spray a lot with this permethrin. It's It's a permethrin and water diluted mix, and this is $19.99, and you get this huge bottle of it. So this is probably your cheapest way to go, and people will add different ingredients um, to their fly sprays. All right, you guys, so that is a very detailed breakdown of how much it costs to own a horse. If I forgot anything, or if you have any more questions, make sure you write them in the comments down below. I'm going to try my best to answer them all. I'm not a vet, so try not to ask me questions that go too deep into that because I really can't give you the best advice. If you need specifics on certain costs, definitely call people around in your area that are doing these things because they're gonna give you your best advice about what things are gonna cost. But this is just a general to get you a feel of what it costs in my area. But I do wanna just put a disclaimer, horses are not in inexpensive animals so just keep that in mind um, you can make it affordable with what you use you don't need to get all this crazy tag but the general horse care is rather expensive so just keep that in mind and it is a very long commitment because horses have a long life expectancy so just keep that in mind um, when you are searching for a horse and just a little bit of advice if you think you want to get into horses if you think you want to buy a horse I do recommend leasing a horse or go volunteer at a barn go feel what it's like to have a horse without having that commitment just yet and then when you're ready to make the plunge watch a lot of YouTube videos get a lot of advice from a lot of different people find a trainer and you will be set up pretty well if you guys like this video make sure you go ahead and give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below make sure you turn on that post notification so you have a chance to do a next post notification shout out today shout out goes to all right you guys I love you and don't forget to enter the giveaway in the description down below and I'll see you in the next one